Ocean Crew, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Karen and I'm from Ocean Chicks Films. Tonight on this all new episode of Movie Madness, I'm gonna take a look at the movie The Entity from 1982. This movie is based on true events and it's horrifying. Let's have a look at what it's all about. The Entity from 1982 is a supernatural horror film based on true events. Single mother of three, Carla Moran, is sexually assaulted and attacked by an invisible force. She seeks the help of a therapist named Dr. Phil Snyderman, who believes her traumatic past is causing her to commit self-injury, and that it is not paranormal. When the brutal attacks continue, she seeks paranormal help. Directed by Sidney Fury, starring Barbara Hershey, Ron Silver, and David Labiosa. So let's talk about the film itself first, and then we'll get into the true story part. This movie was based on the book, The Entity, by Frank DeFolita, and he also did the screenplay. So Barbara Hershey, Ron Silver, and David Labiosa are so good in this film. Their chemistry is really amazing in this movie, and I really enjoyed it for that reason. I really like Barbara Hershey too. It was distributed by 20th Century Fox, and it had a really small budget too. Oh, and also the musical score. Oh my God, the music just adds so much tension. <laughs> oh, it's so good. The music's by Charles Burstein, and he did things like Nightmare on Elm Street, Cujo, April Fool's Day, and even, what was that name of that movie? Oh yeah, Love at First Bite. I love that movie. But the musical score, wow, it really adds to it. I really love that when a movie does that. And the movie's just over two hours long, but that was pretty common for back then. And there's no CGI, so you have to let your mind do all of the thinking in it and kind of, I think that's what makes movies like that so great. I've said that before. I love that about those kinds of films. I'm just, I'm not a huge fan of major CGI unless it's done really well. Um, I prefer to kind of figure things out myself. I always find those kinds of movies much more entertaining and enjoyable. But this one sure does have some heavy topics and it's very disturbing. Like I said, whether you believe or not, there's kind of two theories to this film. One is that, you know, it actually happened and that somehow uh, the lady was kind of psychic and um, open to some sort of supernatural forces that are kind of having at her. The second one is that it was caused from sleep paralysis. But even if you look at those two theories, it's still really horrifying. Let's get into the true story side of it now. So in 1974, a woman named Doris Bither, which is the character Carla in the movie, she claimed that she was being repeatedly sexually assaulted and attacked, her whole family was, by an invisible entity in her home. And her home was in Culver City, California. And she was there living with her four boys, her four sons. And when she couldn't take it anymore and these things were happening to her, she found a group of paranormal researchers who took on the case and tried to help her with it. At a nearby bookstore close to her work, she happened to hear part of a conversation from these two men that were talking about the research that they did at the university, and she you know, thought, okay, I'll, I'll go up to them and talk to them and tell them my story. And when she first described her story to them, of course, they didn't quite believe that it was true, and they said it has to be sleep paralysis that you're going through, and they kind of blew her off. But she convinced them to come to her home and check it out just to make sure. And they ended up going there with um, like 30 other researchers, the team, and studying all of the things that were happening in her home. The Carrie Gaynor and Barry Taff were the two fellows, the doctors, that she convinced to come to her home to do more research um, in all of this. And what she claimed was that there were these entities that she couldn't see that were attacking her, that she could feel there were horrible smells in the place, there were sounds, they heard voices. Um, but she said there were two small 
two small entities and one very large, strong entity that would rape her. And the kids even were being um, attacked by these these entities as well. They were being thrown around. Um, at one point, the eldest son was trying to help his mom when she was being attacked and they could see her being attacked. And he was actually thrown across the room and broke his arm as a result of it. To this day, I think they still claim that it actually happened. Unfortunately, Doris died in 1999, so we'll never know for sure. During the time of the case, of course, she had all these people involved. She ended up leaving that house because they convinced her that she had to leave. And I'll go into all the details of what happened, that she needed to leave the house. But what they found was that the things or whatever they were followed her wherever she went. So she ended up moving to another place in California and then to Texas and then back again. And by the time she came back again, she kind of had a low profile. She didn't want anyone to bother her anymore with all of this um, and you know she passed away so we'll never really know for sure but they do have documented evidence of something happening something really crazy really horrifying so she was about 30 when she approached them about this stuff that was going on and it actually apparently carried on quite regularly right until her death. So horrible. And apparently the house that she was staying in in Culver City, I'll show you that right now. This house has nothing else happen in it. Nobody else has ever claimed any hauntings or any poltergeist activity or anything in it since she's left. And what the researchers felt was that it was attached to her. It's kind of interesting because nowadays they know so much more about this stuff. And you can go on YouTube and you can learn all about ghost hunting and ghosty things. But back then it was such an unusual thing and it's it's really sad that she didn't really get the proper help that she needed for it. And apparently she had a really troubled childhood, you know, kicked out when she was young and she had very abusive relationships and she in turn got into drugs and alcohol and all of that kind of thing and she never really did get help for those things and um, she was a single mom too with four boys and I expect <laughs> being a mom with one I can expect that that was a pretty tough road to have to go down you know that's a lot to take on even back then especially back then actually I mean financially it might have been a little bit easier but socially it would have been really tough to go through something like that the theory was that maybe you know because she had all of those things going on and all of that stress that she was and she could have been somewhat psychic as well or intuitive and something might have attached itself that's the the perfect perfect candidate for something like that happening apparently or if anything you know maybe because she'd suffered so much trauma she was going through some kind of sleep paralysis or something and bringing it on herself. I mean, either way, very tragic and very horrifying to think about. Very sad. The whole family claimed to see supernatural things in the home around her. Orbs, mists, they had horrible, horrible smells. It would get cold in there. Cupboard doors would open and shut on their own. They would get pushed, all sorts of things like that. So they brought in their large research crew and they set up all their equipment and stuff. They stayed there for a few months actually um, to come to the conclusion that they did. And when they first got there, they, they all felt like things were weird. There was a lot of problems with the lights flickering and um, they were seeing orbs and that kind of thing. And they got Doris to, um, aggravate the entity to get it to show itself and they when they did they were taking polaroid pictures and when they took polaroid pictures she would say it's right in front of me they took polaroid pictures and the pictures didn't turn out they were all blurred um, and then they get her to leave the house and take the exact same pictures in the same area and the pictures were absolutely fine um, so that was weird and then they had this moment where the entity was there and they took a picture of it. Instead of the picture, they, they found this picture, I'll put it on the screen now, of these perfect arches of light. And if they think of it in terms of um, someone shining a light on the wall, because of the corner of the space, the light would wrap around and bend in that space. And it didn't, it was hovering above. So they ruled out the idea that it was fake. They they can't explain that one. They also took a picture when they got 
her to, she would swear at it and yell and scream to make it show itself. And uh, when it did, there was one time where they um, saw this mist kind of come together that was sort of green and it formed the shape of a man's torso, very strong, muscly man, um, without, they couldn't see his face. And it made one of the researchers so upset that she fainted and uh, they couldn't get it on camera because it didn't, it just wouldn't register on the camera um, to show up. But they did get some of these photographs that were kind of bizarre and kind of strange. And another thing that they felt was weird was that she actually had bruises and markings on her body. And it would have been really hard for her to do that to herself. Um, maybe not impossible, but it would have been really hard for her to do it to herself, so that was kind of strange too. And because of everything that happened with the kids as well, they decided that this wasn't fake and that it was likely a poltergeist that, or three poltergeists that were actually terrorizing her. And the team decided that the best thing for her to do was to move out of that place. But I guess at the time they, they didn't really differentiate between something being attached to a person or a place. And she left and they kept in contact with her, but it, it just kept going on and on wherever she was. And the activity in the house just stopped. So anybody that lives there now, and the house is still there, it's fixed up and people live in it, um, have never experienced anything like that again. Again, but the the kids claim that the it kept it kept happening no matter where they were. So because of that, I really wonder if this had happened today, what paranormal researchers or ghost hunters would think about what was happening to her right now. You know, compared to back then, like they know so much more now. Um, it's just such a shame she had to go through that, whether it was true or not. Like even if you were having dreams like that. Um, how horrifying would that be? That would be awful to experience and go through. Or even if she was suffering from mental illness and she was going through that kind of thing. It, very tragic, very tragic. I think this movie was so well done. Uh, Martin Scorsese even said back then that it was one of the top 11 scariest movies he's ever seen. And it, it's scary, it's scary even to today, to me anyway. And also a few years after that, Poltergeist came out. So it was kind of, this was a prelude to Poltergeist because there's talk of that a lot of this concept, this movie, this these stories were kind of evolved into the movie Poltergeist. So that's kind of interesting too. I like that one too. That was a good one. That was a good one. So anyhow, I really enjoyed seeing this movie again. And um, if you've seen it or if you go watch it, let me know what you think in the comments section down below. And if you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up because that helps me out a lot and subscribe to the channel so you can see more movie reviews like this and vegan recipes and all that kind of fun stuff. Well, I guess that's it for tonight, guys. I just want to say thank you guys so much for stopping by. I love you all, and I will see you again next week. Bye, guys.